the Cage Siders. I'm Jeremy Long, along with my co-host, the coach, Angelo Reyes. Angelo, great weekend of fights. Oh, so crazy. many great fights. If you're a combat sports fan, this was one hell of a weekend. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We had MMA. We had boxing. Yeah. We had boxing in the West Coast and the East Coast and in the UK. Um, and we had those guests. You know, we, we had Sean Porter come in studio, tell us exactly how he was going to beat Andre Berto, and he right. did it exactly the way he told us in studio. So if you want to check out the past episodes, go ahead and go to uh, cagesiders.com. Shameful plug. Uh, shameless plug. Shameful. <laughs> it is shameful. Some of the stuff you see on our website is incredibly shameful. And you should scrub your browser history after you visit cagesiders.com. Yeah. <laughs> but Sean Porter gets the ninth round TKO. Oh, crazy. Emphatic, emphatic statement for, you know, being the number one contender for a, a rematch. I mean, do you think an immediate rematch no, with uh, no. Keith Thurman? Uh, no? Oh, yeah, definitely Keith Thurman. Definitely I, want, I would love to see uh, Keith Thurman, Sean Porter as the automatic next match. What we don't know, and this is a great time for boxing, guys, is that we have Errol Spence going to England. He's going to be fighting uh, for that, I, I believe it was the IBF uh, championship against Kelp Brook. That's another great uh, star studied 147 pound fight. We still have to find out, hey, what's going on with Danny Garcia? So Danny Garcia is still in the mix. And you know, even though Sean Porter dominated Andre Berto, I still think Andre Berto is a player in this whole division. So maybe we see Andre Berto versus Danny Garcia. Maybe we see Keith Thurman versus Sean Porter. Yeah. Um, I don't know, Jeremy. I, you know, there's so many different ways 147 pound division can go this year. I, I, you right. know, it's just exciting. Yeah, it's exciting. It, it's going to gonna it. be uh, a really interesting next couple of months. Uh, we talked to uh, Steve Farhood yes. on the podcast, the Kate Siders podcast, uh, this past episode. And we were just talking about the state of boxing in 2017. He mentioned last year was kind of down for him. Yeah. That, of course, they had Floyd and Manny in 2015. Right. 2017 is a great year to be a boxing Oh, fan. absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And uh, we had uh, Diego Magdaleno in our studio a couple yep. of weeks ago. We had his brother, the champion of the world, world champ Jesse Magdaleno, again, on the Cage Siders podcast. Shameless plugs. <laughs> uh, All we're just telling you guys is that when we get guests on our shows, what will happen is, you win. You show up. <laughs> you're a guest. You win. It's pretty simple. Almost guaranteed, Almost guaranteed that you walk away with a victory. So let's turn our attention to uh, MMA for a quick second. Okay. UFC Nashville, another one of those fight cards, fight night cards that maybe flew under the radar a little bit. Maybe it's not the star power people, uh, m casual fans are used to, but for hardcore fight fans, this was a great card from top to bottom. Lots of great action. Lots of finishes. And it starts with our boy, Cub Swanson. Yeah, no, I mean, he, he, it was just amazing to see Cub Swanson dominate the way he did. You know, kudos to uh, all his coaches over there at Jackson's uh, MMA. Uh, and big kudos to Brandon Gibson, who I know has been a striking coach for a real for long time. And also Coach Joel Diaz, who uh, works on all of his boxing. He looked fantastic. Cub Swanson, it, it's, it's amazing to see how he flows. You know, he'll square his shoulder. He'll go back to side stance. He'll, he'll throw a block. Then he'll throw a hook. Then he'll throw a front wheel kick. I mean, the way he just mixes it up excites me. And I really we right hope here. we get a chance to see Cub Swanson finally get a shot at a title. Um, maybe winner of uh, Aldo Holloway. I would love to see that. I mean, that it's about time, right? Can yeah. we see? Can we see Cub Swanson? Yeah. Go for yeah, a title that would, shot. That would be an action-packed fight, nonetheless. Uh, does Cub Swanson deserve it? I, I, I want to so. see him do. It. Yeah, I, I, think so. I think so. I think Cub Swanson right now is. He reminds me. Uh, I mean, I know it's an Albuquerque kind of a parallel, but uh, it reminds me of a Johnny Tapia, you know? Like, yeah. he excites me. He gets in there. I'm excited to watch him. I'm excited to see what he's going to do next. Right. And we all know what happens when Angelo gets excited. That's right. Things. So, we Cub Swanson, you're on notice. No. <laughs> uh, we also had uh, a lot of good finishes. Owen St. Pru yeah. pulls off another Von Flucho. Or what, the, what are they calling it? The Von, the Von St. Pru or uh, something? something like that. <laughs> and it's amazing because only three have been pulled off. I think I read somewhere only three have been pulled off in the UFC. And he owns two of them. Now. That's crazy, right? And, you know, in almost back to back uh, uh, fights. So, I mean, that's really. That's insane. That's really crazy for this guy. Also, John Dotson did his yeah. thing. My Filipino brother! <laughs> 
You did it! <laughs> and of course, Platinum Mike Perry yeah. steps in with a standing elbow, knocks Jake Ellenberger back. You, you called to that about one too. 2014 when he thought he was good. See, so this, yeah, is, this is why you guys should pick him for who would you bet on? Because then he says stuff like this. He'll say, I, I he'll say, it. I think Mike Perry's gonna knock him out. And then boom, happens. Yeah, this is what we do. This is what we do with the cage siders. We pick winners. Nothing well, but well, winners. well. Uh, I know on this show later on, you guys are gonna love our who would you bet? Who would you bet on? Yeah, you absolutely are. Uh, in, in studio today, we have uh, Alora Jensen, TNT. They call her TNT, baby. You're gonna see why if you don't <laughs> know already. Wink, wink. Clear the browser <laughs> history again. Um, <laughs> but also, she's gonna be doing our who would you bet on segment. And then who do we have? Uh, Louis Cuba Arias. Uh, great. Great guest, came from Miami. He, yep. he, he, he took the time to come in our studio, give us an update, and um, don't want to spoil it for you guys, but we may be seeing him on a pretty big card here in Las Vegas coming real soon. We'll let him tell us that. Yeah, we'll let him tell us that. And, uh, you know, you'll never believe it. A Cuban born in Milwaukee? Crazy. Yeah, crazy, right? He's got a great story, man. I Spark love this guy. Showtime Pettis. Yeah. Can't he, wait to hear Showtime it. Showtime Pettis. He talks about how uh, he thinks uh, he sees uh, MMA the, the striking in MMA evolving and coming along and how well would Showtime Pettis do in boxing? I think he's going to let us know, man. Yeah, We're he's going to let us know. Him, right? It's going to be a great show, so stick around. We're going to go to our first commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk to Cuba. We're going to talk to him, man. Future world champ. I'm calling it right now. All right? Angel Reyes, Jeremy Law, we're the cage siders. Stick around. We'll be right back. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Cage Siders. Jeremy Long along with the coach, Angelo Reyes. And coach, we got a very special guest in the oh. studio, the next champion of the world, middleweight oh. champion of the world. Absolutely, right. and That's thanks right. for coming, because he, he's normally in Miami, but he made a special stop here before he had to go back. <laughs> uh, Luis Cuba Arias, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Thank you, thank you. No, thanks for having me, man. This is uh, going to be a nice show. Yeah, yeah. no, um, so, <laughs> well, well, we're in an we're in MMA boxing show, yeah, right? Yeah, and, yeah. and now let's talk about your last fight. You won it easy. Easy yeah. money, yeah, as easy. you would say. Yeah, it yeah. was easy. Talk to us about that and how that kind of propelled you going forward now with your two regional 160 pound belts and and i believe you're going to be like in the top seven pretty soon here. hopefully hopefully yeah. that's fine so um i have one uh two regional belts my in august um one for the ibf one for the wbc so this fight was just my first um defense we tried to make a defense on a bigger stage before but it but you know the miguel Cotto card didn't happen so this was kind of like a backup i had to get take the fight wherever it was no matter who so that's kind of what it was you know, fought a tough guy, but he was, you know, just a club fighter. So um, <laughs> I did what I had to do. You know, like I, did, I dominated him. I got the rounds in. So now it's time for the big stage. Man, I got to tell you, because when you watch this guy fight, and he's, I mean, he's the real deal. This mm -hmm. guy sparred Floyd, right? Yeah. He's even sparred uh, Showtime Pettis, yeah. right? Right. I mean, this guy is the real deal. And I, the only thing I'm hoping for for you is, is your management doing anything to finally get you back in <laughs> Vegas? So we can do a fight here, a big one? Yeah, yeah, actually, um, we are, we are. Uh, I was actually supposed to have a big fight here in November when the Kovalev Ward fight originally happened the first time, you know, but the business is a little, you know, tricky, you know, and uh, we couldn't get the fight done. But, you know, we're getting our second chance come June, you know, and as um, far as I'm concerned, I will be making my HBO debut in June. Once again, we just got to get the paperwork correct, but... Uh, I think June 17th will be will be the day that I that I make I'm shown to the world. Wow, mm. that would be awesome. June that, 17th. I, the only thing I can think of is if it's June 17th, that's the undercard of uh, Kovalev Ward too. Whoa, oh, man! Get yeah. that paper right though, yeah, right? Gotta, you want yeah, the you paper kinda, right. That's what it is. You know, you kind of you want to make sure everything's correct. You know, once it gets to the big stage, the contract isn't just one paper. You know, it's it's a little bit longer. So you kind of you want to get your wording right. You want to get the money right. So. Um, but at the end of the day, this time, it, the stage is, is too big for us to turn down. So we're taking the fight no matter what. Wow. Now, can you describe to us what that would, I mean, what that would feel like to, to finally move up to that next level, be in front of a crowd that big? Because you know it's going to sell out, of course, yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. And then walk in there and know that you're on your way to that, that next step. Well, um, I've been working hard for it. You know, I, I've been on big pay-per-view undercards before, but on the lower part. You know, I, I didn't fought on cards where I'm the only guy in the, in the stadium. It's a 15-seat arena, and it's yeah, only yeah. 10 people there. But now that I'm growing and I'm seeing the, the public get bigger and, you know, my, my stock rise, like, it's starting to feel better. It's starting to feel like, 
all right, I'm working for the big lights. You know, this is all you wanted to do is come to Vegas, make it to Vegas for big fights. So, um, like I said, I'm ready, and this is something I've been working for my entire life. So, um, it's only the beginning. Um, I'll be in fighting in Vegas for about 10 more years, hopefully. Wow. Well, now, now, can I ask you, what was it like for you when you were sparring Floyd? And, of course, the obvious next question is going to be, because you even sparred uh, yeah. Showtime Pettis. Yeah. So, you kind of have an idea of sparring a legit 155 pound champion like Conor McGregor, you know, right? And then you sparred Floyd. Yeah. yeah so yeah. in all honesty, you know, in your opinion, Cuba, what do you think? What do you think? I mean, do you think that fight would even happen because there's so much money involved? I think the fight has to happen because there's too much money involved. You know what I mean? Um, I think it's just a money run. It's a money grab. Both guys can make a lot of money. I mean, Floyd's already made this type of money, but McGregor's the only fight where he could come and get that money again. I, to, um, from a fighter's perspective, he doesn't stand a chance at all. You know, like I was telling you before, I mean, this is a guy 49 and 0 fighting somebody who's making their professional debut. I mean, McGregor does have the power, you know what I mean? But he's knocking guys out with those four ounce gloves. You know, once you're hitting guys with those eight and 10 ounce gloves, it's, it's different. There's a lot more padding. You could deflect a lot of the shots. You know, um, it's just, it's not going to feel the same punching somebody with the bigger gloves it is with them small gloves. You know, like I spar Pettis, you know, and had Pettis hit me with some of those shots. There were four ounces. I might have wobbled. He might have been able to clip me. It would have been a different story, you know. But he was able to hit me shots with 14, 16 ounce gloves where I could be like, well, if the gloves were a little different, the, the results are different. You know what I mean? So, um, like, I, four ounces, McGregor could probably clip Floyd if he catches him. Ten, eight ounces, I, I don't see it happening. Not at all. No, Not no, even. No. Now, what Not about even Pettis? Enough. I mean, you sparred with him and everything. How, how do you think he would do it? I mean, I think he would do pretty good if he decided to be like, you know what, I, I had my run in the UFC, I had my run in the MMA. Like, let me just try this boxing out. I think he'd be all right. You know, huh. could, he, could, he, could, could he fight for a world title? I mean, that would it would be far-fetched right now. But could he beat a lot of opponents that guys, you know, that they put in there with 10 losses, guys who only come in to give you tough fights? I feel like he could beat a lot of those guys, you know? Huh. Once he gets to that world, that top top ten level, I mean, we'd have to see. But he has, he definitely has a good boxing, good background. You know, there's, other, there's a lot of other UFC fighters who have right. good boxing backgrounds who are doing really good. You know, like yeah. Cody. Do, do you, think Cody it, was well what's your opinion? Amateur. Do you think uh, MMA, the boxing in MMA, is catching up with uh, um, I, boxing? I in just general? feel like if I was a UFC fighter, I would practice a lot more on my boxing. Okay. When the fight starts, you gotta f start standing up. Okay. I mean, obviously, once they grab you, then you start learning to take down defenses and all the other defenses. But right. the fight starts standing up. And for whatever reason, I can keep you standing up in the center of the, state, in the, of the cage for X amount of time. It's only a matter of time until I catch you with the four ounces. Huh. So, I mean, okay. there's a lot of guys that are doing their boxing. I think they should. Well, I was going to ask you, um, looking at the 160-pound division, and I know you're not the type of fighter to call anybody out because you'll fight anybody, literally. But... Anyone coming, you know, like in your head, like 160, I think I got my style, could have a pretty good fight against that person. Well, um, Golovkin, Triple G, wow. Triple G and Canelo are my, are my two. If I could fight both of those guys before it's all said and done, you know, I, I'll, be, I'll be happy with my career. Um, I can beat both of those guys. You know, styles make fights. I'm a big middleweight. You know, uh, Triple G's, you know, on his way out. But like I said, I'm already ranked in the top 15 right now. This next fight, I was told after we get this guy out the way, we'll be ranked in the top 10. So both of those fights are they're bound to happen. And if they don't happen, it's because just of the business, the nature of the business. But I would like to fight both of those guys. Man, that's awesome, there right? Go. I like it, man. Wow. Wow. I like it. Let's make it happen. Well, Luis, thank you so much for joining us, man. We appreciate you uh, taking time out of your schedule, stopping by yeah. our little show. Yeah. We're, talk <laughs> we're talking to future world champs. Yeah, we are. Man. We are. Have a safe yeah. trip back to uh, Miami. Yeah. And uh, we can't wait you. to hopefully, hopefully, we yeah. see you back here in uh, yeah. Vegas June 17th. June 17th. Yeah. Bring your belts yeah. in. We'll have the hardware yeah. right here sure. on the table, Definitely. right? Bring awesome. Bring them on. Well, stay with us after the break. We're going to have a little bit more, right? We're going to do a segment that we love. Who would you bet on? Stay right here. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Cage Siders. Jeremy Long along with the coach. Angelo Reyes, and we have a very special guest in studio. They call her TNT, baby. TNT! Laura Jensen joins us in studio. Thank you so much for taking time out of your oh, schedule and joining us. God, I love this guy. He's amazing. It's so nice to meet you finally. I've heard a lot about you. Oh, bad things. <laughs> well, oh, right. Right. Not, not too many. I That's can't it. go back to Wisconsin. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. But we, this is one of our favorite segments we like to do. Mm -hmm. We bring in guests, analysts, and everything. Last week, Dan Tom wiped the floor with us. Yeah, two weeks two ago. Weeks ago yeah, two weeks ago, Dan Tom was just doing wiped the floor with us and everything. Uh, this is who would you bet on? Right. We break down fights, and then we 
offer up picks. Yeah. Who's going to win? This week, I thought it'd be fun to kind of mix it up. We've done MMA, uh, UFC, and stuff like that. Let's try a little boxing. Yeah. And, because and, we got a heavyweight fight. Oh, fight. man. And TNT over here is a big boxing oh, fan. Huge. So, huge. <laughs> so nothing bigger than Anthony Joshua versus Vladimir Klitschko. They actually have it going global, Lura. 90,000 seats sold in Wembley Stadium already. Wow. And uh, HBO is showing it as a replay in America. Showtime Boxing is showing it as a live oh in, in the United States, and it's global. This is one of the most massive fights because the only other times that HBO and Showtime has uh, band, uh, mm-hmm. worked together is Mayweather Pacquiao. Oh, yeah. And uh, Lennox Lewis versus Mike Tyson. So just a little yeah, this is, this is a small fight. So, Anthony Joshua, Vladimir Klitschko, what do you think, Allura? What do you oh. think on this one? Oh, my gosh. You know, Vladimir, he's got a lifetime of successful experience under his belt. And, you know, but I'm telling you what, Anthony Joshua, he's a force to be reckoned with. He's he's a powerhouse. And, when, in fact, when you told me this was the fight that, that I was going to be coming on to talk about um, tonight. Yeah, it's tonight. Uh, it's tomorrow, tomorrow night. Tomorrow, tomorrow night. night, yeah. Yeah. Oh God, I forgot what day of the week it was. <laughs> it works so damn much. Um, yeah, he's he's a beast. In fact, I think I told you that. I said, "Oh my God, this guy is crazy." <laughs> oh wow. Um, yeah, I I really ugh, that's a tough call for me. Well, you got a you know almost a passing of the torch situation. If right if he if, wins, if he and wins. this is what we keep saying is, and you yeah. you put a lot of good points in there, Larry, because Vladimir Klitschko, the last time he fought, he lost to Tyson Fury wasn't that long ago and mm-hmm. at 41 again everybody thinks that's old that's not old in boxing and we're talking about heavyweight boxing where any one punch can change the game oh yeah vladimir klitschko has a great range using the jab usually sets it up for that for that nice two or mm-hmm. hits him with a hook so but i know you're super excited about anthony joshua 18 and 0 18 knockouts oh. he's such a beast but but really if you were leaning because this is for me it's 50 50. if you're leaning who would you lean you know, I, I don't think I would want to get into a ring with either of them, but if I'm going to, you know, because seriously, <laughs> but if, if, I, if I had to make a bet and I had to pick, I'm going to go with Anthony Joshua. Joshua okay. Uh, Anthony go Joshua, with, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to. That's Allura's pick. I got to. That's a surprise because uh, we were talking during we the breaks were. and everything, and you, were, you had a lot of love for Vladimir. I do. I, I have a lot of respect for, for the way that they accomplished everything that they have because it's no joke to get that far in a career, no matter how long one has been doing what they do. I mean, right. I don't want to get hit in the head 500 times, and these people do it for a living. Oh, my God, right? <laughs> But my, my, my pick was um, Anthony Joshua because of the way and the reason that he grew up in boxing. And I mm. thought that was way more amazing. I mean, Vladimir, uh, he trained with his brother, mm-hmm. um, and, you know, grew up in boxing with his brother. And that is so great. That's so much love. Um, but I got to give it to the hungrier guy who developed in boxing and got good at it because he had to, because he had to have something to believe yeah, in. man in the right. streets. Yeah. yeah. No, that's what they talk about with Anthony Joshua and being an Olympic gold medalist. Mm-hmm. It's just an, insane. So, all right, Anthony Joshua. Yeah. Jeremy? You know, I am going, actually, I'm going to go with Klitschko. Okay. Vladimir Klitschko. Vladimir, Vladimir, because, like you said earlier, that jab sets up so much for him. And I've seen him just brutalize a lot of talented heavyweights just using that jab. Right. Setting it up, setting it up, setting it up, and then about round eight, nine, ten, he starts throwing those freaking right bombs, man. Mm. And he's done it for so long now. I I want the passing of the torch. I I like the next generation coming up. I think Anthony uh, Joshua is going to be a fine champion, is a fine champion, and he's a great young man. I like I like the old school, baby. Give me old school. Okay, all, all right. Well, uh, you know what? I'm going to go with my man, Jeremy. I'm actually picking Vladimir Klitschko, too. So it's two to one against the TNT. She's totally going to win. But, she, yeah, but, 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 but if totally you watch gonna our win. show, you should always go with the person who's against Don't this. listen to this guy. Definitely always I think I want to change my vote. <laughs> now, be, now, before we leave, uh, I know you're hosting an event this week. Yeah, tonight. Yes, right here, yes. Tonight. Uh, tonight in Las Vegas, I am going to be at Little Darlings, and I am hosting, I'm, I'm judging a BBW dance contest for our luscious and more plus-size ladies who are going to be competing to uh, feel, feel fantastic and sexy while entertaining the crowd. I'm going to be co-hosting that. Wow, that's yeah, awesome. Like that. I, we should go. I was there at ladies. Oh, oh okay. Just, right. just women. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, thank you very much. Let's see what happens this, uh, this yeah, weekend this with Saturday. this fight. Thank you so much for thank joining you, us, taking thank time so. out. I'm we saying Anthony. <laughs> Anthony, <laughs> Anthony, which means it's probably going to happen. So, stay with us. We'll have a little bit more after this break. We're the Cage Siders. Who would you bet on? Tell us. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the show. Jeremy Long along with the coach, Angela Reyes. Coach, we've got a fun weekend of fights coming up. Yeah. Yeah. What's fun show. I mean, just the yeah, whole show was, was It was fun. a fun show. And of course, yeah. Anthony Joshua and uh, Klitschko this weekend. Our picks, yeah, Klitschko. Klitschko. We're picking Klitschko, guys. And Laura Jensen says Joshua, and uh, if history is any indication, she's She'll going right. to win. <laughs> That's your bets now. <laughs> So uh, what, uh, what do we have locally? Come on. Uh, well, we have Samstown. Uh, Samstown. Remember, we had uh, our, our good friend Ray Flores, who's right. the announcer for uh, Premier Boxing Channel. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he'll be he'll be talking. Uh, he talked to us about that show. It's going to be on FS1. Right. Right. So but if you're in town, come to Samstown. It's going to be an amazing uh, show. You, Mayweather Promotions always puts on great fights. Uh, Samstown is one of the fine casinos that you can come into. Right, absolutely. Right? And uh, our friend uh, Latondria Jones, is she uh, still fighting on know, that card? I don't know if she's going to be on that card. I know that uh, I think Juan Heraldez is on the okay. card. Okay, Juan Heraldez. Um, I think like Ladarius that. Miller is on the card. Oh, Mayweather um, Promotions. Ro Ronald Graville. Um, yeah, no, but a bunch of it. But uh, no, definitely, definitely sport, man. We, you know that if you're in Vegas, it's always about supporting. It's always Vegas. about support your local fighters, your local gyms. That's why you're going to be a Las Vegas Raiders fan. I know, That's buddy. why I am going to be a lo <laughs> Man, what the hell am I wearing? I'm wearing a, oh, I thought I was wearing a Raiders jacket for it's a second. It's going to be there. a Cowboys <laughs> like fan converted into a Las Vegas Raiders well, fan. Well, as long as, whatever, man. I, I'm a Cowboys <laughs> fan through and through, but it's cool to have a local team, just like we have local fighters and everything else. That's so, right. Well, great show. Thank great you show. so much for joining us. You can catch the replays. Uh, you know, Fridays and Wednesdays right here on the Action Channel as well. And uh, for everyone here at the Cage Siders, Mike, you doing his thing behind the camera. Yep. They got Rick, Rick doing it. his thing in the booth, baby. <laughs> all of our guys, Ari, and all of all those other people we don't like to mention, but we'll mention at the bottom of the screen. We thank you so much for joining us. Tune into the podcast. Subscribe on iTunes to Cage Siders. A lot more action where this leads off. We'll see you next time for the Cage Siders, baby. <laughs> I don't know what that was. What was that? Man, I don't know.